my name is Paul Grove and welcome to episode 65 of the Gaming Rules Podcast. In this episode, I am joined by my good friends Tom and Matt, and we're going to be talking about our top picks for the games that are coming out at Essen Spiel 2018. As always, a massive shout out, thank you to all of my patron supporters. Without you, this podcast would not be possible. And if you are listening to this podcast and you enjoy this or any of the other content that I produce and you want to help support me, then check out my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Another big thank you to Gameslaw for continuing to support the stuff that I create and also to the Board Game Trading and Chat UK Facebook group for their contribution to this podcast and also to Peter from the Tabletop Together tool that I'll be talking about later on in the show. So without further ado, let's get on with the show. Right, so welcome back to the show, Tom. Hello. How are you doing? I'm, I'm very well, thank you. How's sunny Newcastle under Lyme? It's beautiful. <laughs> the October sun's really hitting it nicely. It's pitch black outside here. You, in a, you must be in a different time zone up there. It's very exotic. So, up right. north. Cool. So thank you very much for coming on the show again. And we're also joined by Matt. Hey, hello. Hooray. <laughs> Apparently the show last time was good with the three of us. That's what people said. They're very, ger- they're very kind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're here a week before Essen. Is it a week before Essen? Almost. Not about. A week and a couple yeah, of days before so. Essen. It'll be a week before Essen before I get time to edit this podcast and send it out. So it's a week before Essen Spiel 2018. I keep thinking 2019, but it's not. It's 2018. I know you've done enough work this year for it to be that's, 2019. Yeah, but. That's what it is. <laughs> um, anyway, we're going to be talking about our top five games that we're looking forward to that are coming out at Essen this year. That's the plan anyway. But... I'll be honest with you, my top five isn't really my top five. Whose is it? Well, (laughs) what I've done is I haven't had much time, as you know, to actually really properly look into the lists and choose what my top five would have been. So what I've done is I've taken your top fives, not that I know what they are, because I'm going to sound surprised when you say them, but... yes. And, I, and I've tried to pick different ones. So the five that I'm going to list are five which I've got my eye on. They might not necessarily be my actual top five, but you two are already talking about some of the other ones, which probably would be in my top five anyway. So I'm breaking my own rules, but that's okay, because I set them, so I'm allowed to. Also, my top five are probably not in any real order, but never mind. <laughs> <coughs> Right, this is why I've got YouTube on the show, because otherwise it's just going to be some amateur talking random stuff about random games that he doesn't really know anything about. But it's all right, you two are going to carry it. No pressure, Tom. So, any questions from you two before we start? What is a board game? What is a board <laughs> game? Well, we can, we can tell you what a Euro game is. If you just go back and listen to podcast whatever it was where we all talked about a Euro game. Oh, yeah. Let's do a commentary for that episode. So, let's crack on and let's start talking about our fifth place choices. We'll build it up, because otherwise we'll do our top one and everybody will switch off. So, fifth place, Tom, what's your fifth place? My fifth place, that I've mentioned many, many, many times now, is Dice Hospital. Okay. Because I'm still very, very excited about it. Right. It looks beautiful. Sabrina Miramon art. Yep. It's lovely and... I can't remember what that word is. Isotropic? Isotonic? The one that's not radioactive. There we go. I'm thinking of the radioactive ones. It looks like Theme Hospital. But yeah, it's a dice drafting game. You're trying to save patients. You probably won't. You're hiring staff. You're building rooms. And it works really nicely based on the prototype that I played. And judging from the the first copies that I've seen, like the the pre-production things, it looks beautiful. Especially Mm. the deluxe plastic ambulances and things oh the ambulances are uh, yeah the ambulances are really good so i mean you you've done a video on this with a prototype yes and you've played it when did you play it it was ages ago yeah was it it was last year mm-hmm. i can't remember everything just blurs into one now. it does yeah but it was <laughs> it was a while ago and obviously i've played this because i i helped write the rule book and i've done the official how to play video for the game yes. so I've I've played this as well, but hopefully it is going to be out at Essen. Yeah, I know that Cesar's been going through some difficulties. Yeah, difficulties. Actually getting to his yeah, games. It's not, it's not a good story. I hope he manages to sort it out because, uh, I mean, I've, I've been discussing with him a backup plan, but it would be a real shame if the game was not out in Essen. People want to go to Essen 
buy stuff, bring it home, or even you know play it in the hotel there. So the Kickstarter shipped, doesn't it? Yeah, I've seen um, a lot of copies yes. starting to arrive on Twitter and stuff. But yeah, I believe so. So that's good news. So yeah, Dice Hospital. It's it's one of those games. I mean, obviously, I, I'm I you know, Ali Cat Games are one of my clients. I was professionally involved in the game itself, so I'm not going to try and try and big it up myself. But it is very high on people's list at the moment and it's had some very very good reviews from some of the very big reviewers in the last month as well which has been really yeah. nice to see so yeah i think i think that's going to be um quite popular that one hope right. so so that's dice hospital tom's fifth place pick matt what's yours uh my pick is salon okay which is probably how you pronounce it it's about tea, and because I'm British, I really like tea. <laughs> and that's um, it. So yeah, it's about the tea plantations in Ceylon in India, uh -huh. um, and building plantations and harvesting tea and doing all those lovely kind of euro gamey things. Yeah, you kind of got a uh, card driven mechanic where you play a card, you pick some number of the actions on it, and then everyone else gets to do one of the actions on that card. So you've got that oh, nice okay. interactive action selection thing. Yeah, uh, and you've got kind of like a a 3D element to the board where you can have plantations on different levels depending on okay. where the kind of raised bits of the uh, uh, board are this game. Yep, I'm going to show an image on screen for those people who are watching stroke listening to this on YouTube. I'll be putting some images on screen uh, of, of this bit. Yeah. So it looks very appealing. So mm, That's one of the ones which was on my short list but as I, I didn't talk about it because I knew you were going to talk about it right so that's that's still on so my fifth place pick and as i say mine are not in any particular order is forum trajanum because it's stefan feld yes there we go and i'm moving on why <laughs> forum trajanum and not carpe diem so carpe diem a friend of mine has already got it that's fair enough then. i didn't want to put two felds on my list and out of the two carpe diem is apparently really good um and yeah a friend of mine's got it i just haven't had a chance to play it yet this one looks a little bit more meaty yeah mm. um and i know very little about it apart from it isn't anything like trajan <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is what everybody said oh is it trajan second edition it's like no um but yeah it, it's it's a stefan feld game so it it automatically goes on my must try list and he's probably going to be one that i enjoy it's just how much i enjoy it so, um, yeah, again, I, I, all I've done is really had a look at the images of it and gone, oh, yeah, that, that looks my kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So, um, if, yeah. If I, I mean, had been cheating, it would have been one of my joint fifths. Right. Definitely excited about that as well. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I like the look of Carpe Diem more, and it may be just that the rule book was, did a better job of explaining to me what the uh, neat element of the gameplay is. But. Right. So you've had a look at both of them. Yes. Right. But neither of them made your... Oh, no, no, I can't say anything. I shouldn't know what your top five is. T -t -t Spoilers. <laughs> God. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. Spoilers. Right, okay. So that is our fifth place picks. Tom's was Dice Hospital, Matt's was Ceylon, and mine was Forum Trajanum. Trajanum. Yeah, that one. Right, moving on to number four. Tom, what's your fourth pick? Teo to Huacan. Right. Now... We're going to be talking about this later on. We're just going to skip it. We're going to we're going to we're going to sort of skip it. So it's Tom's fourth we'll come pick. Back. Build but anticipation. We're, but we're going to come back to it later on because because either me or Matt might be talking about it later. Stay tuned. So yes, that that's Tom's number four. And how how are you pronouncing it? Uh, the way I just did. Okay. <laughs> Teo Teo te 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 Right. I don't know. But when I did the video, this is some behind the curtain juicy gossip for everyone. Yeah. I, I went on Google and a website told me how I should pronounce it. Yeah. And I, I, did that. I had that on and then parroted exactly how the website said and then completely forgot it. I, I, I did that as well. But there's a few that are wrong. There's a few where it's just some, you know, text to speech. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, there's always. Some, yeah, I ignore all the YouTube ones that are usually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. pretty good for a laugh. But I th there's a, there's a Spanish way of pronouncing it and another way of pronouncing it as well. I know that I can't remember the differences, but right. I, I'm close, aren't I, guys? I'm trying. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I I've got the first bit right. I've got Teoti, and then and then I mess up at the end, so it's Teoti Huacan, something like that. 
we should really have listened to. Is it Ella Loves Board Games did the video yeah. of literally how to pronounce this game's name, yeah. and I forgot to watch it before recording yeah. this. Well, I, 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 did, I did, and I can practice it in the comfort of my own home, no problem. And then when I'm speaking to anybody else... What you could do is, uh, at the end of this, just watch the video, record yourself saying it <laughs> properly, and then edit it in over edit everyone in. <laughs> saying that the game's name. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to come back to that game later on. Matt, what's your fourth pick? My fourth pick is The Boldest, okay, uh, which is a very pretty box, um, and it's from uh, Sophia Wagner, uh, yep. who did Noria last Noria. year, which is a yep. game I f- was really smitten by, interested, interested in. Um, so this is her now second release. Um, and it is a game about kind of hand management and kind of blind bidding mm-hmm. so you've got a hand you've got a, a hand of kind of heroes that you're going to send out on missions or expeditions and whoever puts the most heroes into a particular mission uh for this round kind of completes it and gets the glory but then everyone else who went in gets a new character to increase the strength of their hand overall Okay. Um, and whenever you go on a mission, you always have to play heroes all of the same class. So you're trying to manage the values of all your, um, acro- you know, not just across your hand, but across multiple different classes within your hand. And if important point that I forgot to mention, when you when you do the expedition, when you win it, your highest value hero from that group goes away retires right. kind of gets promoted up and you know it's never seen in your hand again okay um so yeah just really it feels fairly you know straightforward with nice interplay of uh, different okay. motivations and if in somebody that. isn't a fan of blind bidding i.e me sell it to me if i don't like blind bidding well like a lot of i mean i don't know a lot of things with blind bidding tend to be you either win it yeah or you don't Mm -hmm. and if you don't it's just bad but here losing it you you, there are reasons why you might want to lose bids at certain points right which is makes it far more interesting than i think like a lot of blind bidding okay star things usually yeah for me i mean yeah part of it is the whole i'm having to try to guess what you've put down and it's those mm-hmm. mind games. And I can't, I can't do that. My me, me, me brain just falls apart. So, um, yeah. But, and also the all or nothing. And it's like, oh, you bid seven. Oh, and I only bid six. But if I'd have known about it, I'd have bid eight kind of thing. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's that. Now, the only thing I know about this game is that um, somebody who I engage with quite a bit on uh, Twitter, Calvin, mm-hmm. he was a consultant on this game. I remember him talking about it. Uh, I think he was a consultant for yes. something or other on this game. To make sure it's all, you know, all, all of all of the different people across, uh, they're, they're all, you know, a mix of genders and a mix of races and I, something like that. He was definitely consulted on that, and he was mm. he was quite excited about it. That's the first time I remember it being um, being talked about. So uh, nice, yeah, right. So that's um, so that's your fourth pick. My fourth pick is Coimbra, which was released at Gen Con. So a lot of people have had this game a lot of people have been playing this game i covered it a little bit in my gen con video and actually i went along to plan b games at the end of the show to collect what was going to be my copy of it which was the copy that was out being demoed um unfortunately that that didn't happen and i got there too late and they dismantled the entire stand <laughs> and there was just mike <laughs> stood there and, his own <laughs> and everything had gone so i was i was late and i missed out getting a copy so i'm i'm going to be picking a copy up it up at at Essen. So for me, it is an Essen release. I haven't played it yet, but so many people have told me about this game and so many people have said I'm really going to enjoy the game. Yeah, so, it would have been on higher up, up, appear at all on my lists if I didn't already have a copy in my office for right, review. Right, exactly. Yeah, so the, game, <laughs> yeah. the game is already out for most people and people are are playing it You know, as we speak. It's just not me. I'm, I'm not, so that's why I've put it on my list. But you know me, Matt. I, I'm going to enjoy this one, aren't I? I haven't played it yet. I have oh, no right. idea. I would say so. 
I think so. It's a very, very good dice drafting game. Right. There's some nice little twists on dice drafting as well. And I like dice drafting. Yes. And you put the dice in little castles. Yes. That's the only bit I know. (laughs) That should be the number one on everyone's list. (laughs) What do you know about Quimbra? Well, you put the dice in little plastic castles. And there you go. Anything else? Do you need to know anything else? (laughs) Uh, Right. So that's our fourth picks. So Tom's Teoti Hawakan, which we're going to speak about later on. Matt, the boldest. And me, Coimbra. Right, moving on to our number three picks. Go on, Tom. Skip. Holding on. <laughs> oh, no, wait, are we, life though? of Billy Kerr. No. Oh, wait a minute. We we've changed the to. format. Are we? we? Change- oh, no, we have changed the format. Yeah, no, we're not skipping it. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to delete that in the Google Doc. See, live editing. There you go. Right. So, let's go again. Tom, what's your third pick? Holding on, The Troubled Life of Billy Kerr. Subtitles on games are awesome. Yes. I love subtitles. <laughs> Not everybody does, <laughs> but I, I do. I couldn't tell if this was sarcasm, Paul. <laughs> no, 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 I do. I, 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 yeah. Pulsar 2849 should have been called Pulsar 2849 Mining Beyond the Horizon. Because that sounds really Ooh. cool. Well, I think it does. I came up with it. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it got rejected and it's just Pulsar 2849. And it was like, ah, But yeah, anyway, sidetrack there. Tell us about Holding On. So it's a, it's a cooperative game where we are nurses taking care of Billy Kerr, who has had a heart attack on a flight, if mm-hmm. I remember right. And he's basically reached the end of his life. And it's our job to kind of keep him going for a little bit and try and unlock the mysteries of his past. He's got a lot of secrets bottled up inside of him. And we just need to pop him open and squeeze some out. Yeah, not 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 literally, but, but yeah. I mean, that's having having tried it at the UK Games Expo. That's a very apt description of the game. Yeah. <laughs> but in a, in an age where we're having games with unique themes, this is right up there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I was being silly mm. about it then, but it is quite a yeah. It's taking on quite a serious topic, and the reason that it is so high on my list, and I went on about it at the expo and things. Is that, yeah, it's trying to do something different yep. with board games. It's trying to do a narrative thing in quite a different way as well. Yeah. You're kind of getting fragments of memories from a deck that represents just the things that he's telling you. And yeah. you're hoping to build up a picture and be able to tell the stories of his life. Yeah. And I, we, I, I've, um, I did a quick interview with Michael from Hub Games on my Gen Con video. So if anybody wants a, uh, a very quick spoiler-free what's this game about then uh, then then go and check out that um yeah. but yeah it is one of those games where if you watch any kind of playthrough or run through there will be spoilers in it is that yeah. right yeah it's yeah. it's it's different scenarios i can't remember quite how many but that'll kind of evolve the story and things but yeah straight from the first one there's there's some spoilers yes i mean i guess it's not too terrible like you'll see some of the kind of memories but you won't have a complete yeah. picture of any of them yeah i think i think you just got an introductory story and then you you will see quite a few of the pictures i think that's the spoilery part yeah yeah mm. but i was actually speaking to michael earlier on today and i've known michael for uh, for many years actually um and this is going to be huge this is being talked about everywhere and it's mm. massively popular, and it's very high on a lot of people's lists. And, yeah. and I think Michael's still worried that it isn't going to do well. And I'm like, you don't need to be worried, mate. I said, <laughs> everywhere you look, people are talking about it and saying how great the game is. So, yeah, I, th- yeah, I think very it's excited. going to be very popular. I'm, I'm, yeah, we- I'm picking up my copy from Michael on the Wednesday when I get there. And, yeah, can't wait. Um, it's a game which I think is one that I will be able to play with Vicky at home. And there's yeah. there's more and more games coming out like that, which, which is good. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it. Right, Matt, you're number three. Yes, I've chosen another game that I'm not sure how to pronounce. Excellent, uh, Teotihuacan. Not that one, no, no. <laughs> this one is uh, Gugong. There's lots of accents all over the letters, so I've no idea. There are, oh, yeah, and... I think it's uh, Gu Gong or something. Right. Um, I did study a bit of Chinese about 15 years ago. Did you? I did, yeah. Oh. But it's been so long that I can't remember very much <laughs> of it. Forgotten, right? Okay. Um, so 
Yes, Gugong. We're set in uh, Imperial China, mm -hmm. and the Emperor has just made bribery illegal. You know, okay. put the hammer down on corruption. And yeah. so all the officials have come up with this new system called Gift Exchange, where they give you something rubbish, and you give them something amazing. And because it's a <laughs> gift exchange, no bribery there. No, not uh, at all. Not at all. So they've uh, <laughs> created a game about that, which I think is great. And so what you have is... Uh, kind of a map of the city of, you know, the imperial city in uh, uh, China and each location, kind of like a worker placement thing, you'd go there. But you, uh, when you go to somewhere, you exchange one of the cards of your hand with whatever cards in that location. And if you give something of higher value, you get to do the action for free and it's great. But if you give something of lower value, then you're going to have to pay uh, some extra kind of resource costs and right. things. So, really neat. I really like how uh, they've tied that to kind of like the historical setting. It seems yeah. like a real perfect melding. Because so. you're, you're like me, you're a mechanics person, but yes. if there's theme behind it that makes sense, it just feels better? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I'm just looking at the images for that. That looks quite nice as well. And that is by Andreas Stedding. Right, that's going on my list. Because he's done some games which I believe are underrated in fact his last game was 2014 which is Stauffer Dynasty which I think is massively underrated and is a really good game and he's not done anything since so yes so that's mm. that's going on my list so thank you very much for that Matt now you're very welcome do you know anything about this one Tom Gugong Gugong yes I am doing a playthrough for before Essen I hope oh right another one filming that tomorrow yes right and yeah, it's really, really cool. I didn't know about any of this bribery malarkey either. There you go. So it's nice to learn about it. So your knowledge of 16th century China was uh, was severely lacking. Yeah, it's infinitely increased, thanks to Gugong. <laughs> but just as a as a kind of mechanical thing, the, the way that you're taking your actions just from this hand of cards and kind of seeing what, num what actions are available to you because of the numbers that are on your cards, because you need to play higher numbers. Uh-huh. Or you need to... You know, discard cards or something it's a really nice way of selecting your actions that i can't think of anything i've played that's similar to that right so you've learned how to play it already and you're doing a playthrough hopefully before resting yes very so in soon the next week right my number three now this sneaked onto my list about an hour ago <laughs> <laughs> thoroughly researched then <laughs> oh yeah absolutely thoroughly researched futuropia is this the um, Friedman Freeze? It is. Yeah. Now, he's a, he's a genius, right? The, I, you know, there's some of his games that are a little bit out there and, and a bit weird, but the guy, the guy is a genius. He's done some incredible stuff. Yeah. Um, and I can't find this game now, looking it up on BGG. <laughs> I think I've... you spelt it wrong in the uh, Google Doc. There's no E. Here we go. F <laughs> Futuropia. I put an E in the Google Doc and I shouldn't have done. So... I, I, I had a very quick look at this and then I got and then I downloaded the rulebook and I started reading through the rulebook. And it was at that point that I thought, oh, and, and this has now gone on my list and I'm I've I've contacted um because it's a, it's a 2F spieler and therefore Stronghold Games will be doing the uh, English version. So I think Stephen Bonacore owes me a favour. If he doesn't, I'm gonna make it up that he owes me a favour, and I'm gonna try and I'm going to try and get a copy of this because it, it it did look interesting um, from from the bits that I read about in the rulebook. The fact that it was a economy based game, it's very low look. It, it looked quite interesting, and as I was do I mean I was only scanning through the rulebook and I was only browsing it and you know reading little sections of it. But I was like, this sounds like my kind of game. So um, yeah, so I've added um, I've added that onto the list. Nice. So have you two looked into this one at all? It'd probably be another joint five for me. Right, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in it. Just for, just for being a, a big box economic freedom and free scheme. Yeah. I don't think, I think I've played Power Grid and various maps of that, yeah. but I don't think I've played any other of his right. proper big games. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the theme sounds appealing. Mm hmm. Um, I guess, I don't know. I, I, I mean, Power Grid's great, but that was a long time ago. And, yes. like, I've enjoyed things that he's done, like uh, Fabled Fruit, I enjoyed, and the um, Fast Forward series from last year. Yeah. There was a lot of fun things in there. Yeah. 
I mean, but so it's yeah. I guess I don't see his games and immediately have to get them yet. No, I, I, I don't. And when I, you know, it, this wouldn't have been on my list, except somebody mentioned it. I looked into it. I thought, oh, okay, mm. I'll have a quick look. And it was only as I started reading through the rule book that I was like, ah, oh, yeah, actually, this, this, it, this does seem quite good. Um, it says it's a look free economic game. You execute the optimal sequence of actions. Um, and it's this, yeah, the, the, the setting of it is, is quite nice. We all want to work less. Um, and we want to get robots to do all of our work and things like that. What's funny is in the contents list, this, this is what it says in the rule book. Uh, Future Opia contains a lot of game components. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, you'll find the complete list at the back of this rule book. But it's just that opening line that basically says, there's a lot of stuff in here. So, um, yeah. Anyway, right. So I've added that onto my list. I'm going to try and get hold of a copy of that. So that's... That's our number threes, which was, holding on, the something-something of Billy Kerr. What was it again? The Troubled Life. That was it. Troubled Life of Billy Kerr. Uh, Gugong and Futuropia. Right. Number two. Tom. My number two is Ray Colt. Mm-hmm. New game from Uwe Rosenberg. And I'll be very shallow about this one because that's, that's mainly why it's on the list. Just, it's designed by Uwe Rosenberg. It's a farming game. Yeah. I'm there. Like, farming Uwe Rosenberg games are like, they kind of sum up. If I, the first thing I think of about board games is something like Agricola. It's like one of the first games that I started playing. It's right. intertwined to me. So, a new one. And I've heard from the rumblings on Twitter and things, it's kind of like at the Gates of Luoyang, maybe a streamlined version of that. Which you've been playing That's a recently. fantastic one of his, yes. Playthrough of that on the Slicker Trips channel, everyone. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, anything that's similar to that? It's it's from Frosted Games. They're doing the multilingual version and Renegade are doing the English version. Yep. Because it's very text-heavy. And it's got some quite different-looking vegetable meeples from what I remember. It does. If I remember <laughs> oh, right, really? the tomato looks like a heart. <laughs> well, they've got to do something different just to keep us, uh, to, to keep us excited. Yep. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm the same with you, Tom. I, I saw Uwe Rosenberg farming and it, it, it's, it, it would have been on my list if you hadn't put it on your list. But on the rule book, it's not just farming. It actually says vegetables and tourism in Iceland. <laughs> right. Now, you remember the IT crowd and in the last season of the IT crowd, Moss did his board game show yep. where they laughed and basically took the mickey out of, what was it, the... Norfolk game, textile, Norfolk textiles or something like that. And it's like, well, yeah, and there's me getting excited about vegetables and tourism in Iceland. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> uh, I'm up for that. Um, yeah, no, that, that, that's, that's on my list. Um, I've got a meeting with Renegade, I think, on the Wednesday, so I'm hopefully going to pick a copy of that up there. So, um, so that's okay. So, yeah, so that would have been probably number two on my list if you hadn't put it on yours. And Matt, your number two. Uh, it's Blackout uh, mm -hmm. Hong Kong. That's... Yes, Blackout Hong Kong, but we're going to talk okay. about that later. We are going to talk about that later on. Right, so come back to that one. So that might be on someone's list. It might be on somebody's <laughs> list, and there's, there's only one more to go after this. <laughs> <laughs> so my number two... And again, these are not really in any particular order, but these are ones that people told me about this afternoon. I've looked into and I've gone, ooh. So somebody told me about a game called Magna Storm. And I'm like, what? Sounds like your thing, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be interested in that. I, I already know what kind of game that's going to be just from the title. Except it was John from John Gates Games that told me about it. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, hang on a minute then. And he said, yeah. He thought one thing and then he looked into it and he, he found something completely different. Mm. And I had exactly the same thing. So I, I, I was completely put off by the name itself. Then I looked into it. It's from Fuhrlandspieler. So it's going to be, you know, I'm, I'm very impressed by the stuff that they've put out. Uh, Michael Menzel artwork. And I buy games based on artwork alone, generally. Um, and it has little turtle meeples. So sold. <laughs> 
Are they not spaceships? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of futuristic, and these are future turtles. Yeah, they're future turtles. They're not turtle turtles, but they're kind of turtle. I don't know. They're things that move around the board, and presumably they move slowly. But yeah, it it, it it's futuristic. It's logistics. It's resource management. Very little look. And the more and more I was reading, I was like, "Whoa, thank you very much, John, for for telling me about this game." Hmm. I notice it's designed by Baldrick and Friends, which <laughs> makes me quite worried for you. <laughs> um, yeah. Are you sure this is such a cunning plan? Uh, it, it, yeah. There's no, there's no green in it, no. But yeah, it, it looks it looks really good. So <clears throat> for those people listening to this who've never heard of Magna Storm, if you like the kind of games I like, uh, then 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 go and have a look at it because it looks like it's gone almost under the radar just because I've not heard anybody mentioning it at all until earlier on today. Right, so that's our number twos, which was Tom's was Reichholt, Matt's was Blackout, Hong Kong, and mine was Magnastorm. On to our number one picks. Drum roll. For Essen 2018. Yeah, drum roll here. Right, there we go. <laughs> Insert drum roll here, edit. Right, Tom, you're number one. Number one, Essen, Spiel 2018. Underwater Cities. Yeah. It's the new game from Vladimir Suhi. I'm saying that right, aren't I, Paul? I learned uh, it from you. Better than most. Suhi? <laughs> yeah. I'm getting there. You're getting there. Suhi. Well, I, said it, I said it about 10 times in the yeah. video. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. And you've this, played this and you've done a playthrough. Yes. Playthrough went up this morning. So all you early birds, get on so that. I think you've given up work. The amount of videos you're putting out at the moment. It's not been easy. <laughs> and it's happening. <laughs> That's all I could say. I've been working on one video now for two and a half weeks. But anyway. So, somehow it's happening. And you can even, if, if you've been like, oh, that's like a drips. He's all over the place with the he camera. There's, there's one on a tripod now for you. I know. I've got a great big metal arm <laughs> looking over the table, making me feel claustrophobic just for yeah. you guys. Anyway, underwater cities. We're building underwater cities. It is, yes. Everyone's got a player board. There's little plastic domes that are the cities. You're building tunnels. You're building desalination plants. I know I've got you excited already. Ooh. There's actions on the board. Kind of worker placement things a little bit. You're taking three actions per turn. You've got a hand of three cards. Cards all do all sorts of different things. You pick an action. You play a card. You get to do the action either way. But if the card colour matches the action colour, you get to do the card as well. And so it's pulling you in all sorts of different directions because things don't necessarily match up like the green actions are rubbish the green cards though are brilliant yeah and progressing in that way you know fill in the rest for yourselves for the other colors but it's pulling you in all sorts of different directions because the cards all do brilliant things and you want to play them all but the action spots fill up or if the action's the wrong color and you don't want to have to waste an action by not playing a card at the same time it's brilliant i can't get across how excited i am about this and i've played it right i've played it and played through it i've played I've played it for too many hours in a day filming that thing. <laughs> but yeah, I was really excited either way because he designs amazing games. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I've liked his games. Obviously, he, 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 he's done a lot of work with CGE in the past. He was one of uh, you know, the two main designers at CGE. Um, taking, taking, taking the fact that I was one of the developers on Pulsar 2849 out of the equation for a minute... <laughs> I think Pulsar 2849 is an amazing game. I think it's fantastic, and I yeah. and I really love it. Um, I think Shipyard is fantastic. I think League of Six is really good. I, he's done a lot of really good games. His most popular game, Last Will, is probably one of my least favourite. I'm not saying it's not a good game. It's just I prefer his other ones, and yeah. I think his other ones deserve a lot more credit. And I, I playtested this one back in March, and I liked what I saw then. It was very rough. And what I've seen now, all of that roughness has gone, pretty much. And it yeah. looks fantastic, visually. Yeah, it's really nice. And it's got quite a nice sense of humour in the art in places as well. Mm -hmm. Like I, I tweeted a picture of the, there's one card where there is a woman in an office and behind her is a kind of, you know, Uncle Sam, I want you, pointing out your poster. Yeah. But Uncle Sam's got a great big diving bell helmet on. <laughs> it was really nice. Underwater Cities from Vladasuhi. Yeah, get on Delicious there, Games is the company. Go and see me at Essen. Right, uh, Matt, your number one pick. Well, I think the listeners may have guessed based on <laughs> um, 
how we were skipping things earlier, but it's yes. Teotihuacan. I'm still not sure if that's pronounced right. Now, you've not played this yet, have you? I have played it. You have played it? I played, oh, right, I okay. played not a whole game of it. I played a demo, uh, which is kind of like the first two rounds or something, up at to the Expo? first scoring at, at UK Games Expo. Okay. And it was so good. Okay. Was um, that the final version? It probably was, mm, wasn't it? It was. It, it looked pretty final. It wasn't completely yeah, it perfect print, in terms of the. Probably. I think. I components. think they still had cardboard, maybe for the pyramids. They yeah, just exactly. had A couple of examples of the actual yeah, but tiles, the game but was every finished. yeah, the game and the art and stuff was solid. Yeah. yeah, it seemed that way. Finished. So, for those of you that don't know, Teotihuacan uh, is a new Mayan-themed uh, game from the same guys who did Zolkin. Yes. From the same one of the one guys. of the same. One yes, not Simone. Right. This is this is Danielle Tashini. Mm-hmm. Uh, was him and Simone Luciani. Right. So this is just Danielle, and and obviously a development team mm-hmm. to back him up. Yes. Um, so you're uh, you've got a pile of dice. Uh, who are your little workers? And they're going round the uh, city of Teotihuacan, um, getting resources and building up this giant pyramid in the centre of the board. Um, and because it's because the Mayans, you know, they have to only walk in one direction around their around their cities, so it's kind of a rondelle. Um, and you're trying to avoid going in the same places as other people because it costs you more. But you want to go into the same places as your own own stuff in order to do more powerful actions there. And your dice kind of level up slowly as they get activated, um, becoming better at doing actions. Oh, it's it's it was absolutely. Wonderful. Do you like your play? That that thing about walking clockwise is that true, or did you just? Make I just that made up? that up. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> this is what those Euro gamers are like. If there's no theme there. We'll, we'll make one up and look. It's got a theme. Sure. <laughs> Leave me alone. You sold me on it. Um, well, I've been lucky enough to ha- to get an early copy of this, and I have played it twice. Oh. And Tom, you've got a copy of it. Yeah, I did a playthrough. The definitive playthrough that you can watch on the internet. Yes. But so everyone's done not, one now. Because this is number four on your list, isn't it, Tom? Well, I'm trying to put myself in the mind of a person that didn't get sent games like a jammy beggar. Like me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In this case. <laughs> of, of, a, of a person excited for Essen that isn't being sent goodies in advance. And I think uh, it's fantastic. It's a yeah. really, really brilliant game. Yeah. And... I was surprised that I've put it number four, but it's hard to think down to. Yeah, it's tr- it's hard as yeah. well to try and think what would I have thought <laughs> well, if I hadn't had this game for like two months. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. If I didn't have this game and I hadn't have played it twice, this would probably be number one on my list because everybody else is who's played it has said how brilliant it is, and it does look brilliant. And having played it now, I I want to play it again. It, it's very, very good. It's interesting because it's got various bits from various other games, some of which are by the same publisher. Yeah. So NSKN did a game, uh, what was it called, Praetor, a few years ago, where your dice level up and when they get to six, they retire. Well, that's the same in this game. So there are, there are lots of little different bits from different games. But what you were saying earlier on, Matt, this is, I mean, I like Rondell as a mechanic for a start and... It, it is a rondelle, but you've actually got three workers, potentially four. And so it's like, all right, wh- wh- which one do I want to move? Mm-hmm. And then, as you say, if there are other people on that space, it's good if you want to collect corn, not corn. What is it? Cocoa. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cocoa's the currency, not corn. But it's bad if you want to do the action because then you have to pay. So every turn is like, ah. That you've got really interesting decisions. Um, yeah, I, I've I've loved my for my first two plays of it, and I, and I can't wait to play it again. Yeah, it's so, like you've just the, like you've got the normal kind of level of decision of where do I move next, mm-hmm. but then you just have that trying to coordinate everything over the course of several turns in yes. the kind of short term. I think that's the where it gets really, really yeah. nice. Because yeah. if you kind of want to get your workers on the same space because then the action is better mm-hmm. so there's definitely a there's definitely a fair bit of planning ahead all oh, right well i'm going to move this one to here and do that action and then on my next turn i'm going to move that one 
to there and that'll get me the gold and then I'll move this one to there and that you can plan that but then you have to be reactive because then two people might go on there and suddenly it's going to cost you four cocoa and you've only got, you've only got three and you're like ah, yeah. I need a new plan and it's got just the right level of planning but then having to mm. change your plans based on what other people do yep. and visually it looks fantastic the building up of the pyramid in the middle looks really good and one thing that um, NSKN have been uh, criticised for in the past, and I, and I can say this, uh, they are one of my clients now, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I am one of the people who has criticised them for this in the past. So you know me, I wear my heart on my sleeve, is their rule books have really not been good. Um, and I'm happy to say the rule book for this game was pretty much fine, perfect, almost. We had no problem. We learned how to play the game from the rule book. I think I had one little tiny question, and that was it, which these days is a miracle. So, yeah, if you're worried about NSKN's reputation on uh, rule books, then take it from me. The rulebook for this game was, was fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, no problem with that. Just all around pretty fantastic. Yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, and it, it, it's kind of no surprise now that it is very high on a lot of people's lists. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's good. Right, so my number one game was Matt's number two game. And this is Blackout, Hong Kong, Alexander Fister, and that's the reason why it's number one on my list. Yep. And I know very little more about it. But Matt, you've you've researched this, so tell us about it. Oh damn it. This is the this is this is the <laughs> game that also made it almost to my number one spot based solely on the designer because nice. he's not really taken a step wrong as far as I'm aware of and has put out some of my absolute favourite games. Yeah. Um, yeah, I struggle. I, I honestly struggled with kind of like to spot like the core in like of what this game is in the same way for a lot of the other games uh, this this time. You know, okay. reading through tons of rule books, and I'm not sure if that's because the rule book's not very as as clear on on what it is. If you know what I mean, like the kind of getting across the overview. High right. level look because I don't have time to read in detail every single no, all these no. rule books ahead of Essen. Um, so broadly, you're all in Hong Kong. There's a big blackout and the city's plunged into chaos, and you're trying to build it back up. But the um, this isn't a competitive. Sorry, this isn't a cooperative game <laughs> like it sounds. It's a competitive game, um, and so you're managing like a team of people team of like action cards basically you play out three every round um trigger their effects trying to collect the resources and get kind of like your kind of influence in the right areas of the city um and then you pick up a single stack of those th of those cards that you've been playing out round by round to as your kind of recharge so there's a bit is that that sounds familiar from mombasa yes is it exactly the same? Because I it's been it's such a long exactly time. It's not exactly the same. It's not. Yeah, for those people who want to know more, I actually interviewed the designer last week, and we talked a little bit about it. I just wish I could remember what he said. Good. Um, but yeah, it, it, the card play is similar to Mombasa. Yes. But not not identical to Mombasa. And the one thing I do remember him saying is that in in Mombasa you will end up with that like the one value cards that you kind of don't really want in the end because you've got better ones he said in this your cards will always be useful mm, okay. your cards represent your team yeah um but yeah so i mean th this is one of the games that was only announced recently whereas teotihuacan has been talked about for months and months and months blackout hong kong was announced what two weeks ago if that yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just you know bang came out of nowhere and i was like quick Get, get Mr. Fister on the phone and say, you know, we agreed to do a podcast two months ago. And he was like, yeah. I said, well, can we do it now? And he was like, uh, okay. So, um, yeah. And yeah, I can't wait. So my, my Wednesday night, I have a game of this booked in. Oh, nice. That, that's how excited I am about, about this game. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to get a copy on Wednesday. In fact, I spoke to Plan B Games today and said, I will be able to get my copy on the Wednesday, won't I? And they said, why? And I said, because I'm playing it Wednesday night with Isaac Childress. And they went, oh, right, we'll, we'll make sure you get a copy then on the Wednesday. And I was like, yep, <laughs> thank you. Cunning. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just name drop. Yep. 
It's not. It's not Isaac at all. He's going somewhere else with somebody more important. But you know, <laughs> I've got my cardboard cut out. That'll do. No, I'm. I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, yeah, one of my favourite designers, and and can't wait. Really yeah. excited about that. Right. So that is our number one picks. We have Underwater Cities, Teotihuacan, Blackout Hong Kong. Right. Woo. Let's go to a couple of tools. Excuse me. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I see what I did there. Um, so Tabletop Together is a tool put together by a friend of mine, Peter, uh, who still owes me an ice cream. Um, but he said he'd buy me an ice cream if I gave him another shout out. So there we go. Um, so Tabletop Together is, a, is an online tool which helps you sort through the 1,000 plus new games that are coming out and basically make your own list and evaluate them and rate them and put them into some kind of logical sense. And thankfully, it, it keeps all of the data. So it keeps all of your data. So it knows what you had for breakfast. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't know that. But it, it, basically, what, what I've got is I've got the top 25 games as on the tabletop together tool. So it's what people all around the world are rating as their top five. And let's go through them in reverse order. So number five is Gugong that we talked about earlier on. Fine choice. Yeah. Number four is Azul Stained Glass of Sintra. Who knows anything about this? Only that it's that another Azul. <laughs> yeah. And so I didn't really look at it in any kind of depth because I just kind of ignore any kind of new editions of previous games or, you know... Azul with stained glass windows. I remember there was a little bit of controversy over it in that it's sort of stained glass and therefore people were saying, oh, it's just like Sagrada or they've stolen the idea from or something like that, but probably not. No, I don't think Sagrada invented stained glass windows. No, don't think they did. <laughs> <laughs> it's like saying we can't have any we can't have any other games about farming. Oh no. <laughs> uh so are you not a fan of Azul then, Matt? Oh no, I liked Azul. Right. Um, it's just really this good. is a, a version two of it, and you yeah, kind of like, so it's like yeah, whatever. I, I'm not. I will definitely try it at some point. I'm sure right. if I get chance to. Um, but it's not going to be the ones I'm most excited for at Essen. Right. Okay. And you, Tom? No. Well, may maybe it depends how different it is to Azul. Okay. Because Azul originally. Especially at two players. Very, very yeah. mean game. <laughs> yeah. Right, number three on the tabletop together tool is Reichholt. Vegetable and tourism in Iceland. So they should have put that as the subtitle. They really should have done. Subtitles, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Subtitles. Farming beyond the horizon. No, anyway. Um, <laughs> right, so that's number three, Reichholt. Number two... None of us had this on any of our lists, and this is Architects of the West Kingdom. Why did none of us have this on our lists? Because it's number two on the tabletop together. Yeah. Team. Do we know? I, I don't know. It's I, I had a look to check when I knew that we'd be talking about it. Okay. Uh, it, it seems quite cool that it's it looks... It's uh, Shem Phillips' game. He's got everything in... They all work together, don't they? They're all in kind of the same universe. Same yeah, nice looking say, games. The artwork looks familiar. So we've yes. got Raiders of the North Sea, Explorers of the North Sea, and this That's is That's what I'm thinking of, yes. Yeah. I've played one of those. Th this is the third one. No. I think this is separate. This would be the Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't know why I'm saying that. I've got no information about that. Right. But uh, uh, it's, it's designer. I know that it's a worker placement game where you want to place the more workers you've got in an area, the better for you. But there is also an action that you can take where you can take workers of anyone's colour out of a certain area and have them for yourself. Okay. Intriguing. Mm. I mean, I think because it's number two on the tabletop together list... It was a big Kickstarter. Oh, right, okay. Um, not too long ago. Um, so I imagine that has a fair bit to do with it. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's worth one of us at least having a look at it because it, it seems to be quite popular. Mm. So that's Architects of the West Kingdom. And finally, number one on the tabletop together tool is Teotihuacan. Unsurprisingly. Yep. And looking at the rating, it's miles ahead. Yep. 
Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a very big gap to the next one. Um, but yeah, so there we go. That's uh, that's that. Now the other thing I did is I did a poll on the board game trading and chat UK Facebook group. So for those people who are on that group who are listening, thank you very much for. Um, uh, basically, I can't remember how many people joined in. It was a few hundred in the end, I think. Um, but let's go through those now. So fifth most popular was Caverna Forgotten Folk. Now, we didn't cover any expansions. And I, I, I don't normally cover expansions when I'm looking at my top five most excited because I'm classing new games. Did you two do the same? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. They're what? cheating the Facebook group. Well, I didn't tell them not to. and But what surprises me is that is the fifth most popular thing that people are looking forward to at this year's Essen. So even if even if I was really, really excited about that, which I am because Caverna's great and I love the game, but I don't class... I, I can't get as excited about it as an, an expansion as I can for an entirely new game. But... I didn't give them that rule. I didn't give them that restriction. So that's what they voted for. Um, are you two fans of Caverna? I've Not only really. played it once and I enjoyed okay. it. Yeah. I enjoyed me, it. Me I was too. really impressed by it. Right. I missed the cards. Oh, mm. The Agricola cards. I don't. <laughs> yeah, that's what I love. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, Caverna was 2000 and... Uh, 12? Whatever. 11. It was a while ago. Well, isn't isn't this this isn't a new Rosenberg design, is it? No. Isn't this a fan made thing that has now become official? Oh, yes. That's that's what I understand. Right. Is it really cool? I like they're doing it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if you're the fan that's designed it, uh, uh, Alex I'm Wilbur. Not. Oh, <laughs> cash in the attic. <laughs> uh, then yeah, yeah, that's great. So, um, yeah, I've got a friend of mine who's, who's, who's getting this, so that's going to get played. Absolutely no question about it. Uh, it. Looks good. So that was their fifth pick. Their fourth pick was Blackout, Hong Kong. So good taste there. Their third pick was another expansion, Terraforming Mars Colonies. <sighs> Sigh. <laughs> but Terraforming Mars is still a massively popular game. So it, it does make sense that the new expansion is on people's list of things they're looking forward to because they're still playing Terraforming Mars. It's still, you know, one of their favourite games, if not their favourite game. So, of course, they would be looking forward to it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I just I just feel disgusted that that's in third and the uh, Great Western Trail expansion is not even yeah. there. Yeah, because as we all know, Great Western Trail is the best game of last year. Was it last year? No, it was the year before. The year before. <laughs> Time is a uh, I know what whole different is. experience um, for you, isn't it, Paul? <laughs> it is. <yeah. laughs> I think I, I think I slept last year. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Why the why the why the rails to the north? Is it expansion? Yes. Is not yeah. mentioned. But terraforming. Well, terraforming Mars is a more popular game than Great Western Trail. That's just how it is. But why Tragic. the Great Western Trail Tragic. expansion is not there over Caverna Forgotten Folk? That surprises me. Anyway, moving on. Board Game Trading in Chart UK Facebook group. Choice number two, holding on the troubled life of Billy Kerr. Copycats. <laughs> Those are copies you. But yeah, th that's their number two pick. So hundreds of people voted on it, and that was their number two pick. So Michael really would be very happy to hear that. Uh, and we talked about that earlier on. And finally, the number one choice on the Board Game Trading in Chart UK Facebook group. I think people can work out what it is. It's uh, it's it's that Teoti who 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 I can again. God, yeah, Everyone, gets everywhere. everyone's just all a buzz about this one, <laughs> including you, <laughs> including me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have my own opinions anymore. <laughs> and these are these these are generally people not lucky like me and Tom, and haven't actually had played it. I think a lot of them probably have played a bit of it. At UK Games Expo, maybe. Maybe. I mean, um, they only had like one copy of it, so they did, and it was pretty, pretty well hidden. Yeah. So, is it fair to say that Teotihuacan is probably the most anticipated game overall? If we were to sort of combine all of the different lists everywhere. Yes. I think so. <laughs> I, 
because the one thing we've not covered is BGG I actually have a list as well of like the Essen tracker and what people are talking about. Oh. I, I haven't covered that in this particular podcast, but I did have a quick look there yesterday, and that was number one on that list as well. Huh. Yeah. So, yeah. There we go. Well done in SKN. Mm, yeah, very good for them. Yeah, very good. And I was, uh, I, was, I was very, very close to working on the rulebook for this game. They actually apologised to me. <laughs> and they said, sorry, Paul, we weren't able to get you the rulebook in time for you to help with it. We, we had to go on and, and do it, and you were busy with other stuff. And I was like, well, you know, thank you. You didn't have to apologise, but thank you very much. <laughs> um, and yeah, the, <laughs> the rule book's fine, so they don't need me. Um, yeah, right. Well, that's everything. So any games on the top five of either Tabletop Together or the board game trading in chart that surprised either of you? Not really. Um, okay. Well, I guess we were both surprised by the architects <laughs> of the West Kingdom. Oh, yeah, because we had to look up what it was. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that, that was number two. And, and I'm, I was a bit surprised by the Caverna Forgotten Folk expansion being, being the fifth choice on, on the Facebook group. Yeah, what about, what about the Feast for Odin one? Say again? What about the Santa Maria one? I'm looking at the top ten expansions now. Oh, right. They should have mentioned the Feast for Odin one. They should have mentioned the Santa Maria one. Yeah, well, the Santa Maria maybe Ooh. not, but Feast for Odin, <laughs> that's very, very... If we were talking about expansions, the Feast for Odin one is... The Feast for Odin one and the... Great Western Trail one are well. They were my top two favourite games that year. So yeah. both of those expansions are joint top of my must-have expansions. I'm pleasantly surprised that Holding On has got so much attention. Like for a, what feels like a very different indie game. Yeah, very indie game. I mean, it's a fairly reasonable-sized publisher, right? It's the guys who did Rory Story Cubes, or, uh, or uh, yeah, I mean, it, so it's, it's, it's publisher, Rory but, and Michael. Yeah. So it's. <laughs> Just the two of them, I think. Oh, God, really? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. But it seems like a very experimental game in like yes. many ways, right? And, um, but to have everyone so excited about it, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's really good. It's good that everyone's gone with that kind of spirit as well. Yeah, but, exactly. But every preview that I've seen has mentioned the, you know, doing something new with board games. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad that so many people have got on board with that yeah. kind of concept. And we've had a lot of this in the last you know, three, four years with Time Stories. Fog uh, of Love. Yeah. I feel like falls into a similar kind of yeah. category in some ways. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking sort of, yeah, ga games that kind of break break out of the mould of trading in the Mediterranean mm. or resource conversion. And you're right, Fog of Love is, is completely up there with a, a very unique theme about about real life. And, and, mm. the, and the holding on as well is, is actually capturing a... Uh, you know, a thing about real life. There's a guy in hospital, he's in a coma and, you know, we're piecing together, you know, bits of his memories or something mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah, interesting. Um, and, I, and I'm working on the, the video at the moment for Cerebria, which is an yeah. amazing theme. I love the theme of Cerebria. Um, it's like numbskulls from the Beano, isn't it? It's like what? It's like numbskulls <laughs> from the Beano. Numbskulls from the Beano? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't yeah. remember that. Oh, <laughs> I used to read the Beano in the seventies. Well, I think the characters that Disney, inside your head. Disney used, yeah, Disney used the Beano as a big influence for that. Oh, I can't remember the film's name inside now. Out. Is it Inside Out? Inside Out, yeah. yeah. Big Beano fans, Disney. Right. <laughs> but yeah, game, games with unique themes. So anyway, we're 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 rabbiting on. People have probably switched off by now. So um, yeah, that's it. So just to recap, our number one picks were Underwater Cities. Teotihuacan, Blackout Hong Kong, and then the two other groups that we asked were the Tabletop Together tool, which was also Teotihuacan, and the Board Game Trading Chat UK Facebook group, which was also Teotihuacan. So there we go, that's, that's ours. Um, if there's any games that we missed, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, me and Tom are going to Essen in a few days' time. You lucky so things. There is, yeah, there is, there is still time to... Um, to add more to our list of things that we should come back with. And you two are both coming down to mine in November when we are going to be playing through as many of these as we Every can. Every single thing that was released. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How long are you staying for? November, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right, let's wrap things up. Thank you very much for joining me. Just a quick reminder of where people can find you online, Tom. I am Slickerdrips on YouTube. 
slickerdrips.co.uk. That's slickerdrips. Sounds so dirty. And Matt? I am Creaking Shelves at creakingshelves.com and on YouTube as well. Thank you very much for your time. I'll get this edited tomorrow and hopefully released by the weekend. So, yes, thank you very much for listening and uh, thank you both for, for joining me. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you, Paul. Bye. I hope you enjoyed the podcast and found some information in it useful to you. If there are any games that we missed off the list that you think we should be looking at, then please let me know in the comments below. Or if there was any games that we covered which you hadn't heard of but you're now interested in, then again, please let me know that too. So a quick thank you again to all of my Patreon supporters. Like I said at the start, without you, this podcast would not be possible. And if you want to help support the show, then please check out my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. And thanks again to the Board Game Trading and Chat UK Facebook group members, to Gameslaw, the UK's largest specialist games retailer at gameslaw.com, and to Jason Shaw at audionautics.com for the music used in this podcast. Gaming Rules is a member of Punchboard Media, where we all bring something to the table. Until next time, take care and thanks for listening.